Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hello lads and ladies, Brad the Guitar just here with another episode of Projects from the Vault. In this episode, we'll look at an old project of mine where I took a vintage 1960s K mandolin in desperate need of some serious attention. I did not get any before shots showing all the damage uh, that had been done to this poor thing, unfortunately. Uh, but as you could see, this one had suffered a broken off headstock and to make matters worse, some chunks of wood had been lost. So a filler would be necessary. In these photos, you can see the area of the headstock break after it's been re-glued and a wood filler has been applied. When employing a filler such as this, it's best to put more filler in than you think you're going to need to fill the space because it will shrink during the drying process. It's also best to apply the filler in a few layers rather than trying to fill a large void all at once because it will take forever to dry and may not even dry altogether at all. Most wood fillers on the market uh, advertise as being able to be sanded and stained just like wood, uh, but be careful if you're using a stain because stain can dry lighter or darker than you might expect it to, making the repair more noticeable. You can see from these pics at the back of the headstock there was more than one chunk of wood missing and getting this repair to disappear entirely will be a chore. Here we can see the other major problem this mandolin had. The fretboard was curling up at the body and detaching from the neck. Also, even when pushing the fretboard back down, it was obvious the neck was going to need more work to make this playable. So instead of just re-gluing the board back down and leveling frets to make it playable, I decided to remove the fretboard altogether and sand the neck flat. If you haven't seen this done before, it just involves working a flat heated knife under the fretboard to loosen the old glue. I always do this kind of stuff in my kitchen to be near my stove so I can boil some water and just plop the tool down in the water to reheat as necessary. The water on the tool also helps to moisten the area and seems to make this kind of operation go faster. Here we are with the board off. As you can see, it came off cleanly with minimal chipping. Someone also had added a strap button at some point and used a really long wood screw to hold it in place. The screw was also serving to marry the neck uh, to the neck block more securely. Uh, not sure if this was by accident or if it was intended by someone in the past to fix a, a neck issue. Here I am steaming the board a little bit in preparation for straightening it. After getting it nice and steamy, I clamped it to a flat surface for a few hours. I think in this case, the thing to which I clamped it was a snow ski. Here we are with the body taped off in preparation for sanding the old finish off the neck. One of the happy side effects of doing such projects in your kitchen are the interesting inclusions of things like sticks of butter in the background of your pictures. Here I am preparing to level the neck a bit. A lot of acoustic instruments as they age can develop a hump or bow in the fretboard and this is one way of removing such humps. There are other ways as well but this one seemed the most appropriate in this particular repair. Here I've attached some sticky backed sandpaper to a fret leveling block which works well for this purpose. For more severe bows it might be better to carefully use a plane. Here is the neck after some careful leveling. I didn't have to remove much material to get this neck nice and level. Reattaching the board to this surface would yield a level fretboard as well, precluding the need for much fretwork. Because of the extent of the damage to the headstock, a refinish on the neck was going to be in order here. So here's the headstock sanded in preparation for that. Here is the area of the headstock repair after sanding. The original finish on the neck was a light transparent brown, but I would need to go darker on the finish in order to hide this repair. 
And here's the back of the neck after sanding. The neck appears to be maple on this K mandolin. A lot of the cheaper American brands from this era, such as Harmony and Regal, used other hardwoods like pear wood and birch in their builds. A closer shot of the back of the headstock and its repair here. You can see there is some extra filler in one of the machine head holes, and we'll need to drill that out later. Here we can see the repaired crack a bit better. This one came out good and tight. I don't think it'll ever break at the same point again. Here's a closer view of the neck heel with no finish. And you can see why I say this must be maple. The grain is a dead ringer for maple. In this shot, you can clearly see how the headstock was originally made with the center bit being one continuous piece with the rest of the neck and the two outer wings being glued on to widen it. One more close-up pick of the filled area on the headstock front. To finish the neck, I could have gone with a solid color like brown or black that would be opaque enough to cover the repair, but I chose to go with this Minwax Poly Stain finish instead. It's a darker brown than the original, but I thought it would do a good job covering the repair. It's also a stain and poly finish in one, so I thought it might save time also. I chose to use a sponge to apply the finish. It would take multiple coats and some sanding at the end to get a decent look. Here we are refitting the fretboard and checking the area of the extension that was formerly pulled up from the neck. It now lays perfectly flat without pushing it down. Here's the back of the headstock after the finish is applied and I'm drilling out a little bit of leftover filler from the machine hole. In hindsight I should have done this before finishing but oh well. Here we are gluing the fretboard back on. And here we are after the clamps are off and the machine heads are back on. This was my first experience with this Minwax Poly Stain and Finish combo stuff. And it came out okay on this project. I left the front of the headstock where you could see the lines like it was grain or brush strokes under the finish. This would help hide the repair, but you could still see it a little bit under the finish. The lesson I learned here was that even though you might fill something and if it looks flat after sanding, you can't really tell until after the first layer of finish has been applied sometimes. But with the strings on and everything, it's really hard to tell. You have to get right up on it to see it. Only one more thing to do on this one. The chrome plated tailpiece cover had some obligatory rust and pitting on it. So I decided to take a Dremel with a wire wheel attachment to it. Uh, this knocked the rust off and a bit of polishing helped it disappear further. So overall, I was fairly satisfied with this repair. I definitely learned my lesson on the use of fillers. Next time I'll use a primer or sanding sealer to find and cover uh, imperfections before finishing uh, so you won't see the repair under the finish. Also a solid opaque color would have been a better choice for this one, uh, but overall I consider this a successful repair. We put an out of commission vintage mandolin back into service and these K's from this era are inexpensive and can be surprisingly good players after a good setup and some attention. So that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this project from the vault and until next time, y'all take care.